So I want to talk a little bit about uh, analog versus digital signal processing, especially when it comes to dynamics processing, and I guess especially compressors. I think for the most part, uh, when you're talking about peak limiters and, and protection circuits vis-a-vis -vis limiters, you're going to find that just about everybody's using a plug-in for that. They're much, much faster, there's less overshoot, they're much cleaner than what you get in the analog domain. But when it comes to compression, this is kind of, I think, the, the final frontier uh, as far as uh, DSP processing not quite living up to analog processing. So when you look at a equipment roster of a high-end mastering studio, if you're going to find anything that's analog, more likely than not, it's going to be a compressor. So why is that? Um, a lot of the, uh, the DSP programming, either compression simulations or um, the convolution uh, devices that mimic compressors do an awfully good job at, at uh, recreating the dynamic range control that happens in an analog compressor. Um, but they don't quite seem to sound the same as the original compressors, so what would be different? Well, if I speculate a little bit, and I'm not saying I've got all the answers, I'm sort of making some observations here. Um, the first most obvious thing is when you come out into the analog domain, you get added distortion, you get added noise, um, which are things that are not necessarily things that DSP engineers are going to program in to their digital circuits. Uh, so you get a slightly different overall presentation of the sound. Um, the other thing, and this is something that was proposed to me by George Massenberg, is that the thing that really drives the action of a compressor is the detector circuit. In other words, the thing that tells the compressor when to compress. And he was speculating that the sample rate for the detector circuit in a digital compressor needs to be much, much higher than the typical sample rates that we're using now because of the nuances that you typically get at the output of a compression stage. So if you're running at 44.1, 44.1 may be totally fine for the audio passing through, but it may not be fine for the audio that's feeding the detection circuit. Again, it's speculation, but it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to consider. A lot of the time you'll find mastering engineers using an analog circuit not because they're going to use an EQ to equalize or a compressor necessarily to compress, but there's something about the filtering that takes place by running audio through that analog gear that changes the sound in a way that's desirable. Uh, there's a little bit of a filtering effect that takes place. So you may see somebody have a fancy compressor not compress, but still use the signal path because they like the sound that's imparted to the program by using it.